Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another D5 video. Now, this is my second ever attempt at using D5. And again, if you saw my first video, you will have seen I've only just started to use it recently. I've been super impressed by the rendering quality, the new interface and the ease of use of D5. So I thought I'd share with you my journey and sort of my second time ever using this. However, this time I've got some super exciting news. I've just taken delivery of my amazing new Mesh PC a beautiful fractal design focus uh, two case with a top of the range AMD Ryzen 9 7600X processor. But best of all, I went for the 4070 Ti graphics card, which is pretty much the best that I could afford at the time. And it made sense in terms of the most power for a uh, pound, if you like. So I'm very excited to share with you my new PC, doing this first amazing test on uh, the D5 rendering studio so let's have a look and see how this goes hi everybody jonathan here with another d5 tutorial and today i'm going to be taking my second ever look at this amazing new rendering software and basically we're going to explore this new garden restaurant um sort of tutorial if you like and just see what we can do with it as ever um, i would definitely recommend you have a quick scroll through the gallery there's some really nice imagery that you can see and basically just see what the rest of the community for D5 have done. So what we'll do, well, let's go ahead and double click this scene and we'll kind of launch it and let's explore this together. Now, first observation is you can see it's actually loading pretty quickly and you do get lots of nice little hints and tips on the way as you go too. Okay, so here we are. We've now loaded up the uh, beginnings of this new sort of uh, scene. And basically, as ever, we've got the beginner's guide. Now, if you do want to not see this again, obviously show, don't show again. Um, but let's have a quick reminder. We've got the selection tools. We've got the insertion path and particle tools here. This is where you're going to find things like the camera tools, display and navigation. You're also going to get all the export images and video and sort of render queue stuff over here. Let's have a quick look at next. Yep, we've got a reminder of the orbiting and flying around. So again, when you're new to D5, this is definitely something that's quite useful. Um, I haven't actually used the libraries yet, so this is something that I'm interested to explore. Now, do remember, this literally is my very second time ever using D5. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and click update on these assets. And we'll just let those download and we'll come back and start the video properly. Okay, so you can see uh, we've run through the little updating process. So let's just click done and we'll go into full screen. So here I am in D5. I'm just sort of navigating around the scene. And at the moment, you'll notice I'm in basically sort of draft mode. Okay, so let's just see what happens when we go into click onto the actual sort of high resolution render. So we go to display. You can see I'm in smooth or draft mode, as I would call it. Let's go ahead and go to precise mode. So we can actually do that with a keyboard shortcut with the F1 key. Okay, so let's click F1 to sort of go into draft mode. There we go. Yep, that's cool. Oh my goodness, wow. So already uh, what I'm actually seeing in this scene is amazing sort of quality real-time rendering. And this is something that, you know, if you saw my first video on D5, I was pretty blown away by, to be honest, guys. There's some really nice sort of effects on things like the uh, refraction in the glass. The global illumination is obviously pretty amazing. Things like the caustics. Looks like we've even got things like subsurface scattering in some of these materials as well. And I really like the kind of real-time nature of these little reflections as we go through also. And I've actually logged in now. You can see that because I've got the uh, D5 Pro version, none of those sort of watermarks that you saw on some of these sort of earlier videos before I was logged in are showing. So that looks a lot nicer without those sort of funny kind of watermarks that you saw on the plants and things. But I guess that's a way for you to test out D5 um, without the sort of Pro version. So just going back to my initial observations on the sort of rendering quality and the speed. I mean, honestly, it is pretty mind blowing. And a great little tip here is if you click F2, you'll go into preview mode. So here, look, I'm getting an incredible frame rate and I can move really kind of quickly. If I hold shift down, I can go even faster. So this is no problem in terms of sort of navigating and placing objects in my scene. When I'm ready, I can either go up to the display and click on precise, or I can just click F1 to go back into preview. So that's a really nice little feature, the toggle between preview and realistic mode. Excellent. Okay, so that's very, very straightforward and easy to sort. 
Okay, so navigating around as ever is just going to be the standard sort of WASDA keys. Just be aware that you can hold spacebar to slow down. Okay, so that's nice. We can slow down or shift to speed up. So it's quite easy to adjust your speed as you go. Now, I just want to recap on basically um, the fact that we can double click on the scenes and sort of jump between those set views. Now, if you do want to, you can make a few adjustments. Let's just adjust that camera. Let's go around here a little bit. And all you need to do is click on the update button in order to secure that new updated view. And then when we go to a new view, we can just double click to go back to that original one. So that's all very easy and very cool. If you would like to start working on your actual image formats as well, um, so here's a new image that I've just set up a moment ago. Just to remind you, all you need to do is click the image button here. Then down at the bottom, you get a really nice sort of pop-up where you can kind of do those final adjustments and basically change things like the focal length as well. Let's just tweak that focal length. Um, obviously, these are interrelated, the focal length and the field of view. Um, look how you can also set the resolutions down here. So when you come to do your final images, you can kind of set that. And I really like you, the way you get this sort of different panel of, you know, the you can get the whole screen, but you can see the actual kind of image framing size there as well. So it's a very neat little feature. You can also program in, if you really want to, 4000 by 2000, for example, let's say 1500, just for a strange uh, proportioned image. Good, okay, so let's once again just click on plus to save that new scene. And you can see, not only does it actually save the settings, it will save the view as well as we go between those. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is have a look at how we can actually create a video. So in order to do that, we simply click up onto the video button and you'll notice that we've actually got the uh, dock down here, but we haven't got any keyframes just yet. So let's click add camera. This will generate our initial keyframe. Now let's move forward a bit into our scene. Let's sort of drive through a little bit and we'll click add camera. And that's created two keyframes. So all we need to do to play through those video keyframes is simply play the button. So very, very straightforward. You'll see that you can also sort of drag the slider back and forward as you would expect. Okay, so once again, if we want to maybe set up uh, another keyframe, let's just kind of go through to a slightly different view here. Simply click add camera and that will generate that new snapshot there. So now we should have the key, three keyframes. We'll move through to the first position and then eventually we will slide through to the next position. So very, very straightforward and very simple. You'll also notice you can actually adjust the time between each segment. Um, so I really like this feature. This is meaning that you can actually really slow things down um, and sort of add more time between the transitions of the different keyframes just to get a bit more kind of, um, you know, smoother motion, if you like, as you move through. Now, pretty amazing. All of this is playing in real time, the preview. Um, I guess if we did want to, we could go into smooth settings. That'd be interesting just to play through the video in those settings. Even smoother, look, and you'll see that the frame rate I'm getting is even higher. So if you're just kind of doing a draft preview, this will be fine in smooth settings. Um, but when you're really ready, you just want to kind of hit the rendering key and you know see what it looks like in its full glory i noticed that in things like the smooth um things like the caustics and the glass transparency doesn't really work what we'll do we'll review the videos at the end but i just want to run through this process one more time and set up my second clip so i'm going to go down to clip two click on the plus button and when i'm ready to click my first keyframe simply click add camera that will generate my first keyframe so now let's walk through it a bit in our model, sort of float over that table. And we'll do a just nice straightforward view there. Click add camera. And basically, let's play. So you can just see how incredibly easy that is just to set up a couple of keyframes and preview those out. So that's nice. If I want to, I can just change the time by double clicking in here and make it uh, 12 seconds, for example. So now it'll play twice as slowly and a lot smoothly, uh, more smoothly. So very, very easy to set up videos with a couple of keyframes. Now, a really good little tip when um, setting views like this up is don't try and do what I call the roller coaster ride. Okay, so let me give you a good example. Let's sort of drive around uh, to this side of the scene. Okay, so these are often very nice scenes to set up when you're doing videos. Click plus, 
um, generate your first keyframe and basically put it into fairly slow speed and just sort of move a little bit across the drawing. Okay, and then basically click camera. So what that will do is just create a very nice smooth transition from one frame to the other. And this is often better than doing a big sort of roller coaster ride around the whole scene. So what's really nice is any of these uh, keyframes are available. I can change the resolution right up to 4K and things like the frames per second. If I do want to, again, I can just adjust that time there. Let's make that 12 seconds as well and just review. So it just sort of feels very cinematic, nice and zoomed in. But I think really the nicest thing that I'm seeing is the preview on screen is very, very realistic, even while we're kind of previewing our video here. So if we do want to, uh, we can also click onto the keyframe. You'll notice there's also a few aspects here where we can actually ease in, ease out, or do various aspects here. And this will basically change the kind of transition as we go from that one keyframe to another. In terms of sort of speeding up the video, you'll see that it was a bit slower at the beginning. So that's a very easy to control and nice little aspect. Another thing that I've noticed is that if you click onto the environment, and um, presumably we can actually sort of change the sun direction and intensity values a little bit here. Let's just see if that makes a bit of a difference. That's definitely having a bit of an impact on the image. Um, so, you know, you can actually kind of control things like the lighting and maybe the intensity as you go through. So I quite like that with a slightly darker intensity. Let's go through and see how that works. Okay, actually, I think what you've got to do, go back to the first keyframe. If you're going to make that change, let's bring that intensity down a bit darker. Yep, that's cool. And then just click update. Okay, that's good. And then we go to the other one. You'll see it's back set on one again. So if we just drop that down as well, click on update. Yep, that's good. We should find that that has now recalled the brightness of those two images. So that's easy to adjust in between the keyframes. One other very nice thing that you can do with the video is you can basically click onto the frame and you'll notice that up in the video inspector, you can actually adjust, of course, the environment, uh, the effect, and that ease in and ease out as we talked about before. Basically, this makes it pretty easy for you to adjust, you know, the image sort of quality, things like the intensity, uh, exposure levels as well, just to kind of really tweak things like the highlights, shadows, compensation, um, and just an amazing amount of control really, white balance as well. And what you can actually do, if you do want to adjust that, you just simply click on the plus mode. So for example, if I go to this view, okay, well, let's just pan around that view a little bit differently and click update. But at the same time, let's also go down and introduce a bit of strong vignetting. And just to show you, let's desaturate the image a little bit to black and white. Okay, so all of those changes will come in between the keyframes. So if I go right back to the beginning, watch how we're um, quite nice and bright. As it goes around from one keyframe to the other, it starts to desaturate and introduce the sort of vignetting. So very, very cool actually. It's something that I've not really noticed um, other software being as easy to do. So I think this will make it very easy to be, you know, very cinematic with your kind of uh, animations as you go. So let's just kind of adjust that around that view again just to see how nice it is looking out that window. We'll add another keyframe. Just for fun, uh, let's get our saturation back up, get our color back in. Let's take the, um, what do we do? Let's bring the lens flares up a little bit. Let's get a bit of bloom into the image. So you can just see, I can just adjust all these things. Oh, that's interesting, bit of tint. I don't really want to do the tinting. So I guess there's a way you can just um, click in here. Yeah, you can just type in zero or different numbers. So very, very interesting. Let's go zero. And finally, let's just get those shadows a bit less and scroll up and scroll down. All sorts of options that you can come in. Here's the ambient occlusion, by the way, as well. I'm intrigued to see what would happen if we click plus there. Okay, so let's play our video. We're gonna go right back to the start and we're gonna go panning round to that second position of the camera. It fades out into a sort of desaturated image with a lot of vignetting. Then our third keyframe, as it goes through, sort of transitions through to basically the last keyframe. 
So here we are, we've done a couple of simple videos in D5 and I hope you've enjoyed this journey learning with me as I try literally it for the very first time. I mean, the purpose of the video is just to show you how incredibly easy some of this stuff is. And if you're not using real-time rendering, it's definitely something you should be trying. So in my next video, I plan to try and import some files and use some assets and some libraries. Quite excited to do that. But basically, let's go ahead and add these clips so I can render these out. So all I need to do is click onto my Add to Render Queue button. Okay, so let's clip onto that second clip, Add to Render Queue and clip two, there we go, add to render queue. So when I'm ready, I'll go up to my render queue here. So as well as some still images, which I'm gonna produce, let's do a few of those as well. So I'll just come back out of there, click onto the camera, and I think I'll choose my favorite views. I really like that view there. So let's add that to the render queue. Let's click onto that one. Yep, that was a nice one. Let's add that one as well. And I think we'll get one more looking down the table there, perfect. Okay, so we've got a few nice views that we can kind of add. Let's do one more just for the sake, and off we go. Um, one more thing though, do remember that you can set the resolution of all of these, and I'm just kind of going for a fairly sort of standard resolution on the images, and on the video I'll do at 720p just for this very first video, but I could go right up to 4K. So when I'm ready, I'm gonna go ahead, select all of my various items, tick the ones that I want to render, and basically let's go for it. So I select the location that I want to put them. I'm just gonna go and put them into my D5 videos drive, select and off we go. So I'm gonna auto close after the rendering finishes and hopefully I'll come back later and all of these will be done and we'll report on the time. So thanks for watching everybody. I look forward to showing off these videos at the end and as if ever, if you're new around here, please drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye bye.